Millions of years ago a meteorite made of vibranium, the strongest substance in the entire universe hit the African continent. The impact also affected life around the area, five African tribes then fought over a meteorite containing vibranium metal. Until finally a soldier swallows an heirloom potion that is influenced by metal, and gains superhuman abilities to become the first Black Panther. He also united all the tribes to form the nation of Wakanda, except for the Jabari tribe who chose to separate themselves. For centuries Wakanda used vibranium to develop advanced technology, and isolated itself from the world. In 1992 the king of Wakanda T'Chaka, visited his brother Njobu who lived in Auckland, California. T'Chaka accuses Njobu of stealing vibranium from Wakanda, and of working with a black market arms dealer named Ulysses Claw. At first Njobu was evasive, but it turned out that his co-worker had been a spy from Wakanda named Zuri. The scene then switches to show the present, on that day T'Chaka is known to have died in the bombing that occurred at the UN office. After the death of T'Chaka, his son named Chala returns to Wakanda to take over the throne. Before his coronation tomorrow morning, T'Challa and Okoye leader of Dora Millage go to pick up T'Challa's ex-girlfriend named Nakia. At that time Nakia was carrying out an undercover assignment to help several citizens from terrorists. The next day T'Challa, Nakia and Okoye finally arrived in Wakanda. They were also greeted by T'Challa's mother named Ramonda and her younger sister named Suri. In another place, precisely in London, seen a man named Eric who was visiting a museum. He wondered about several heirlooms including a weapon thought to have come from Wakanda, apparently he had conspired with the claws to steal the weapon. In Wakanda the inauguration ceremony for T'Challa as king was finally held, all the ethnic groups in Wakanda finally gathered to witness it. Zuri, currently the elder of Wakanda, presides over the ceremony for the king's inauguration. According to custom, before the king was sworn and he had to do a ritual battle first. For anyone who does not accept or object, welcome to fight against T'Challa. The four tribes gathered there, apparently didn't mind at all if T'Challa became king. But from the direction of the cave, the Jabari tribe came out and challenged a ritual fight against the T'Challa. The leader of the Jabari tribe named M'Baku doesn't accept that Wakanda has to be led by a weak man, who can't even protect his own father. The ritual fight finally started, in that fight T'Challa was overwhelmed but in the end he managed to beat M'Baku. He then persuaded M'Baku to surrender as T'Challa did not want to kill him. Thanks to his victory, T'Challa was finally crowned the new king of Wakanda. The rituals that must be followed do not end there, the king who has just been appointed must undergo another ritual to perfect the power of the Black Panther. With the power of a potion of heirloom leaves, T'Challa is sent to meet his late father. At that time T'Challa told his father that he was actually not ready to become the king of Wakanda, but his father strengthened T'Challa because he believed that he could be a good king for Wakanda. Remembering he has a pure heart and is surrounded by people who love him. The next day T'Challa went to meet the leader of a border tribe named Wakabi. T'Challa told her about Nakia who wanted Wakanda to provide assistance to oppressed tribes out there. Unfortunately for now T'Challa is still unsure, because he must prioritize the safety of the people in Wakanda. While they were talking, they also get a call from Okoye. Okoye announces to Wakandan officials that one of Wakanda's vibranium artifacts has been stolen from the London Museum, and the culprit is still the same, namely the Claw. Claw has been a fugitive of Wakanda for 30 years, and he is one of the regrets brought to death by King T'Chaka. That's why at the beginning of his leadership, T'Challa was determined to capture him alive. At night, T'Challa meets his sister Suri who is now the leader of Wakanda researchers. Suri also showed some of the results of the development he did, from shoes to new costumes for Black Panther. Long story short, T'Challa, Okoye, and Nakia travel to Pusan, South Korea. Where Claw plans to sell the artifact to a CIA agent named Rose. Agent Rose deliberately disguised herself as a buyer, because she also wanted to catch Claw, who had been her fugitive for a long time. Not long after, Claw came with his troop, all of Claw's troop then spread all over the room while Claw completed the transaction with Agent Rose. In the middle of the transaction, Okoye was found out, so he was forced to show his identity. In a short time the chaos finally happened, shooting was everywhere and Claw tried to escape. T'Challa stopped him, but Claw took out a weapon in his hand filled with the power of vibranium. That finally knocked T'Challa away, allowing Claw to escape. A chase ensues between them, Nakia and Okoye in a vibranium car while T'Challa in a car controlled remotely by Suri. Claw who saw this did not remain silent. He also attacked Nokia and Suri's car with a vibranium weapon and shattered the car to pieces. The angry Black Panther immediately used his strength to stop the Claw car and took the weapon in his hand. Before T'Challa kills Claw, Okoye and Nakia arrive to stop him. They agree to take Claw to CIA offices for further interrogation. At the CIA office, Eric attacks and frees Claw. The attack also seriously injured Rose, because she protected Nakia. Rather than go after Claw, T'Challa chooses to take Rose to Wakanda where their technology can save her. While Suri heals Rose, T'Challa meets Zuri and asks about her uncle, Anjobu. Zuri explains that Anjobu fell in love with a foreign woman, and had a child. After he left Wakanda, he plans to share Wakanda technology with people of African descent around the world. To assist them in conquering oppression. 
Unfortunately the plan was not approved by T'Chaka, because it would put the people of Wakanda in a dangerous situation. When King T'Chaka caught Njobu, Njobu tried to attack Zuri which finally forced King T'Chaka to kill him. Because of that King T'Chaka ordered Zuri to lie, that Njobu had disappeared and they left Sun and Job as alone to maintain that lie. At the same time Agent Rose finally woke up from a coma, Agent Rose looked confused because she was able to recover from all her injuries in just one night. This can happen because of technological advances in Wakanda. At the border of Wakanda Eric came to meet Wakabi carrying Claw's body, this finally shocked everyone. Agent Rose recognizes Eric, he is a former CIA agent who has the nickname Killmonger. He got that nickname because he is a cold-blooded killer, who can always slaughter every enemy. He was then brought before the elders of the tribe, he revealed his identity as the son of Njobu named Jadaka. And he also claims that he is also entitled to the throne. Eric also challenged T'Challa to a ritual battle. It didn't take long for the ritual battle to be held. At the beginning of the fight T'Challa was able to keep up with Eric's strength, but moments later Eric managed to turn things around. As he is about to kill T'Challa, Zuri stops him and says that he was the one who killed his father. Knowing this, Eric, of course, immediately killed Zuri, after which Eric carried T'Challa's body and threw him to the bottom of the abyss. With this, Eric was finally inaugurated as the new king of Wakanda to replace T'Challa. Not accepting the coronation, Nakia asks Okoye for help to dethrone Eric. Unfortunately, Okoye refuses because he doesn't want to betray Wakanda, moreover, Eric is considered to have seized the throne legally because he went through a ritual fight. Because of that, Nakia, Ramonda, Suri and Agent Rose finally left the palace. Before leaving Nakia managed to infiltrate the ritual cave, to take some heirloom leaves. It was there that he saw Eric ordering his elders to burn all the heirloom leaves. Luckily, before everything was burnt down, Nakia managed to take one of the heirloom leaves to take with her. Elsewhere Nakia, Suri, Ramonda and Rose flee to the Jabari tribe for help. Unexpectedly there they also found T'Challa in a coma, where T'Challa was found by one of M'Baku's men on the river bank. T'Challa is healed with a potion of heirloom leaves, when he is reunited with his late father who welcomes T'Challa to join them. Chaala then got angry at his father because he had killed his own sister, and abandoned an innocent child. Now the child grows up with grudges inside him, and it's all the result of his father's actions. King T'Chaka said he had to do all that, because he had to protect the people of Wakanda. But T'Challa does not want to be like his father, so he is determined to return to the throne and become a better king. After realizing that T'Challa did not forget to express his gratitude to M'Baku, because he had saved his life. The next day T'Challa returns to Wakanda to fight Eric. That day Eric plans to send vibranium weapons to the outside world, but one of his planes is damaged by T'Challa. Eric who is currently a king, orders Wakabi and his army to fight T'Challa and Dora Milage. In the middle of the fight, T'Challa tried to revive Wakabi but instead he summoned an army of rhinos. Meanwhile, Suri, Nakia, and Agent Rose infiltrate the laboratory to retrieve weapons. Suri and Nakia will go out to help T'Challa, while Rose will be asked to pilot the jet from a distance and shoot down the planes that will leave carrying vibranium weapons. Coinciding with that moment, T'Challa saw Suri who was about to be killed by Eric. This also made T'Challa angry, so he brought Eric to fight in the Wakanda vibranium mine. T'Challa deliberately told Suri to activate the vibranium carriage, because if the train passed them it would weaken the power of the vibranium inside their armor. Outside of Nakia and the others who are being cornered, finally getting help from M'Baku and Jabari. Thanks to M'Baku's help, they managed to turn things around, so that Wakabi admitted defeat to them. Back to T'Challa and Eric, when the train was about to pass them T'Challa deliberately took advantage of this to attack Eric and stab him. T'Challa, who had no intention of killing anyone, said to Eric that he could heal him. But Eric refused to be healed and chose to die as a free man from prison. Eric's last wish is to see the sunset over Wakanda, and T'Challa makes it happen. After that incident, Wakanda returned to normal life. One day T'Challa took Suri to where Njobu used to live. He plans to set up a Wakanda research center in the outside world, which will be run by both Nakia and Suri. And the film is finally over. In the mid-credits scene, T'Challa appears before the United Nations to reveal his Wakandan identity to the world. On the other hand, Suri is seen helping Bucky Barnes in his recovery.